Hello, Good Tree Youth, and anyone who is joining our Sunday worship for the first time. Hi, my name is Brian. I'm a pastor of Good Tree Youth Ministry at Korean Church of Queens, and welcome to our Sunday online service. Friends, who is out there? I would like to ask you a question. What was your best time of rejoicing throughout the week? Well, simply asking you, what was the most funny moment or fun time that you had in this past week? Was it doing nothing, just chilling in your bed, or talking to your friends through Zooms or through chattings, checking your social media pages, playing games, possibly playing some bowls or getting fresh air in your front yards or backyards? What about going out for shopping with your friends? These days, because our life is so limited in a certain places, there aren't many exciting moments we can produce. It is true. Uh, but we also have to ask our question, ourselves a question. Can we find eternal joy or joy that will last every single day of my life, even in this time of pandemic when life is so limited? Maybe some of us or many of us may have a, I mean, can have a hard time to find the answer to the question. But I got to tell you, no matter what happens uh, to our circumstances, to our lives, there's always one in whom we can find the comfort, peace, and joy that is Christ Jesus. And we are here to worship Him. Uh, and as we worship, not only we can glorify Him, not, we, not only we can enjoy, uh, let's say, that the position and privilege of being God's children and Christ's follower who is our Savior, but we can also receive uh, the spiritual gifts uh, that's comfort and peace, assurance and faith and joy and delight that no one can provide us. So friends, I would like to invite you to this worship. Please put everything aside. Either it's your phone, tablets, um, books that you are reading. Just put everything absolutely from your hands and moreover from your mind and heart and give all of you to the Lord. And I'm pretty sure you and I at the end of this time will be blessed so much that that power of glory and the joy will last for the rest of the week. Let's come before the Lord and worship Him. And we're going to start that with call to worship. Almighty and gracious God, it is a privilege to worship you today in this One in Christ family. May our praise be joyful, may our hearts be turned towards you, and may our souls be quenched with the waters of your word. We give you all glory and praise and gratitude this day and forever. Amen. This time, Yan Kim from 12th grade will lead us in prayer by singing a song, Man of Sorrow. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, oh. 
this time, let us confess our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This time, Kayla Ann from 10th grade will lead us in prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful Sunday that you've blessed us with. And thank you for our families, friends, and this loving and supportive community in KCQYG. I pray for everyone who's going through loss, suffering, or loneliness. May they find comfort and peace in you. Please continue to keep us healthy and maintain hope for the future. During quarantine, it may be harder for us to pay attention to online sermons and dedicate the weekly hours of worship that we used to. I pray that you will restore focus and dedication in all of us so that we may use this time to become closer to you. Thank you for everything that you've done for us. May your grace and mercy be ever present in our lives. We love you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. This time, friends, we're going to bring our offering to the Lord. Please place your envelope or offering into your baskets and boxes and allow me to pray for this. Father God, we give this offering to you and we want to thank you for all the blessings that you have given to us, all that we didn't deserve. Lord, as you are generous to us, allow us to be generous to others so that we could share that abundant love of Christ with those who are in need and invite them to life with Christ as a follower of Christ and be a part of God's family as God's children. Lord, we confess that everything we have, it belongs to you because everything we have came from you. And even every breath we are taking that is given to us as you are merciful to us. Father, thank you. We love you. Give us wisdom so that we can use this gathered offering for the kingdom purpose. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now it's time for scripture reading. And today's passage is coming from the book of John, chapter 3, verses 3 through 18. And let's read aloud together. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him 
shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the word of the Lord, and everyone should say, Amen. In today's passage, Jesus Christ is facing a man named Nicodemus. Nicodemus was one of Pharisees known as religious leaders uh, among the Jewish community. And this man comes up to Jesus in the very late night and calls Jesus Rabbi. And Rabbi does not mean just merely a teacher. It also means you're my religious educator, of course, my spiritual leader, mentor, and you have authority as well, if not political authority. So it actually means like, oh, I respect you for all that you have done for who you are. Although I'm not too sure that Nicodemus, he might have felt something different about Jesus Christ. Uh, maybe he was guessing or thinking and maybe started believing or choosing if I should believe whether he's the Messiah that we had been waiting for or not. Uh, but he wasn't all into that, but he was at least showing respect to Jesus Christ as a rabbi and saying, I admire all that you have performed, all the signs and miracles. But Jesus reacted abruptly and saying, none of those things would matter to us. What matters to you specifically, if you want to see and enter the kingdom of God, you got to be born again. And that's, I think by hearing this, uh, Nicodemus could have been surprised or shocked by two reasons. First, what do you mean by being born again? I'm a grown man. There's no way I can go back to my mother's womb and reborn. I mean, be reborn, right? And that just probably did not make any sense to him. Secondly, he said, unless you are born again, there's no way you can see and enter the kingdom of God. I mean, these are the people that had been waiting for the Messiah so that they could be saved be rescued and delivered from their oppressions and be saved by God, by the Messiah for all their life, for the entire of their life, uh, generation after generations. And now he's hearing like all that I have been studying in my life, the law of Moses, I mean the law of God that was given to my ancestors. And so we've been studying and teaching and passed on to next generation because we believed by observing this law, we are eligible to stand before the Messiah, the, uh, the Savior who will come to save us. And you're telling me none of these laws matter? None of those efforts that we had put matter? But what matters to us is to be born so that we can see and enter the kingdom? And that's the situation. And that's the background of the passage we read today. So that's... Like I said, I named Jesus teaches about new birth. But I think those two questions or reasons why Nicodemus could have been surprised. We also can be surprised. Yes, we hear peripherally, uh, frequently, often, we have to be born again. As Christians, we have to be a reborn or born again Christian. But what do you mean by that? Why we need to have that experience? Let's take a look. And there are three points I want to share with you. So the same question, how can we be reborn? And what do you mean by that? Well, Jesus Christ not only challenged Nicodemus. And in fact, it's not that Jesus Christ wanted to challenge him, but Jesus Christ told him the truth. Because Nicodemus is the man who thought to be a righteous man because he was following and teaching and learning and passing. And the law of Moses on to next generation as it was given by God yes but he I mean just like other Pharisees or all other Jews they are saying they were expecting and waiting for a long time the Messiah the Savior but as they were keeping themselves to the law which is understandable but they try to keep themselves righteous rather than representing God to others by observing those laws so there was a misconception of the law meaning as the law was given to them through Moses by God so that they could live more righteous 
life than sinful life and presenting God, representing God to others, like mirroring God to other people. How loving God is, how merciful God is, how much abundant grace that He has, and He's a righteous. There's no uh, um, promise breaking. He is the promise keeper. He's a provider. And He's the one that everyone should follow and love and cherish and honor and worship. That's the concept. That's the whole purpose of the law. But He was just following it just to make themselves to be righteous, to be more presentable before God or before the Messiah that they were waiting for. But Jesus Christ is saying, no, there is different need. And that need is to be born again so that you can be truly be saved in order to see the kingdom of God and be able to enter the kingdom of God. Let me go back to the passage we read today. John chapter 3, verses 3, 5, 8. John, uh, Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can seek the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Verse 5, Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Friends, here is what you got to learn. To be born again means you are not just Christian by your name tag. You are not just Christian by the ears that you have been attending the church. Uh, you are not Christian just by the number of short-term missions that you had participated. You are not Christian by those days and hours you have spent with your church friends playing basketball, eating pizzas, or being in different worships or fellowships and different meetings. It's not about your family is Christian, so you just go to church. It's not about you're clicking the uh, YouTube video, which is our Sunday service, Friday service, or the weekly devotions. It does not make you to be a Christian. It does not make you or make you able to see God's kingdom and enter the kingdom of God. Meaning it does not save you. None of those titles, none of those entitlements, none of those works, none of those deeds, none of those efforts would make you become able or eligible to be saved unless your heart, your inner person, your mind, your choice, everything of you are transformed or being transformed more like Christ Jesus and be following Him, His instructions, His holy code and godliness, uh, basically having your inner person changed more like Christ Jesus or having Christ and His life entering into your life, being transformed. You are a totally different person. Outside, maybe you have the same appearance. I have a roundy face. I have a longer hair now. Um, I, w I wouldn't say I'm chunky, but I'm kind of busky. I'm kind of big. I'm not slim, right? I mean, because you became Christian, I'm not going to go slim. I'm not going to have a better haircut. No. But what matters to Jesus is, if you want to be saved, if you want to see the kingdom of God, if you want to enter the kingdom of God, your inner person has to be changed. So, as you're saying you're a Christian, are you being different than before? If you are still cursing out, if you are still being angry, aggressive towards others, if you are still being lazy, procrastinated, if you still don't like to read the Bible, if you still don't want to listen to the Word of God, if you still don't like to listen or sing and um, praise God's songs, I mean the, the Christian song, if you still don't want to volunteer in different opportunities, and if you still expecting other people to serve you rather than you serve others, if you're still waiting for others coming at you asking first how are you but not you go somebody and ask how are you and try to encourage someone can you say that you are really really a reborn Christian I mean something happens to you your automatic response is oh how can I do that where can I find the help Okay, I got to talk to this person because he's smarter enough. He's smart enough. He's smarter than me. He has more power and authority than me. He said he, he or she has have more experience than I do. Or you say, before I would reach out to somebody, Lord, I'm kneeling down before you. This is my situation and I really need your help. 
give me give me your your wisdom your guidance allow me to see a person and know the person or meet the person who would give me more insight so that i can have um enough knowledge to figure this out what is your reaction what is your mindset what is your where is your heart is your heart places in something else than loving jesus pursuing to know him better or loving the word of the god try to get to know this better or get to know god better and more through the words or you want to serve to others you want to literally just want to learn about jesus christ just like i shared with you on friday there's always something that you learn newly about jesus christ is that your desire or all that you want to do is like eating relaxing i'm not saying you shouldn't be resting no don't get me wrong there is a there is a need of resting and eating and doing all those things and to enjoying what is given to you but where is your focus what is your inner person is that the same person before you met christ or maybe you haven't met christ genuinely face to face then i'm telling you friend this should happen you and i we all should be born again so that we can live as a true christ followers and see the kingdom enter the kingdom of god amen friends and that does not happen because we do all the good works or we put a lot of efforts we just physically make ourselves available we use our energy to serve somebody no i mean those things do not make us holy those things do not make us eligible to see and enter the kingdom of god as our inner person are transformed it becoming more like christ jesus as we pursue to become more like christ and bear the christ likeness as a result we may produce good works and good fruits but good work does not make us to be holy or be a real christian so unless our heart is changed there's no way that those good works can motivate us then something that something has to be started inside of us is that right and when we look at ourselves although we are saved and we call this a righteous one do we still have the good stuff in us no we still have those sinfulnesses and we are in the process of bearing christ likeness the goodness of god where we have to start with is receiving the holy spirit as our ultimate instructor guider because he encourages us he teaches us he reminds us about christ and his teachings so that's why jesus christ is saying unless they are born of water and the spirit unless you are baptized with the spirit and with the water unless you are so wrapped up with christ and his spirit there's no way that you are born again to see the kingdom of god so I'm talking about you are, should be a different person. You're not the same person like before. Before Christ, yes, maybe you just come to church, you're part of the church family or church members, but inside of you, you're the same person. There's no love towards Christ. There's no towards love towards other people around. There's no eagerness, passion about God's mission that was given to you, which is love one another and love God first, love others and go and make disciples be a fisherman of men don't try to live for your own sake your own prosperity but try to save others just like you were given the grace and love and you accepted it and now you are safe do it friends that those things don't happen because you're doing some good works you can be born by the grace of god and by his given spirit the holy spirit the third person of the tree in god amen secondly the way we can be born again allow me to read the passage we read already today john chapter 3 verses 13 through 15 it says no one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven the son of god referring to jesus christ verse 14 just as moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness so the son of man must be lifted up that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him this is the word of the lord well friends the way we can be born again like i said there's no way that regenerates 
our heart in a good way. There's nothing that generates positive things, a goodness of God that we should bear in ourselves. There's no way that generates a love of Christ in us. So we need the help of Holy Spirit. Just like the wind, how the verse 8 says, right? The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. So we need a power of Holy Spirit for us to achieve or to receive that gift of what? Being born again. Being transformed. But the way we can be born again, friends, ultimately it happens because Christ dies on the cross. Verse 14, like I read, Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. If you look at the book of Numbers, chapter 21, verses 4 through 9, uh, those Israelites that Jesus, uh, that God had brought out of Egypt from their oppressors, they were on the way to the promised land that God had given to them, or God had promised to their ancestor Abraham. Going back to um, Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 4, God calls Abraham, said, You should leave your country, your father's house, your, uh, and go to the land that I uh, give you, and I'll curse those who curse you, I'll bless those who bless you, I'll make you into a great nation, I'm going to make your name famous, I'm, I'm, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bless you so that you can be a blessing to others, and you will be a blessing to others. And God was keeping that promise for these people. But these people of Israel were not faithful to their God. I mean, God was faithful to them. He was keeping His promise that He had made to their forefather, Abraham, so many years ago. So God was not doing this. I mean, bringing them out of Egypt, feeding them and leading them, looking after them and protecting them. God was not doing this because these people deserve all these things. He did it because He is a God, God of promise. These people stood against God. They rebelled. They dishonored verbally and praising other gods like idols. So God sent serpent. People started getting bitten. And now they understand, oh, we shouldn't be doing this. And you know, if someone betrays me, I would not show that kind of grace. But God showed grace again. He told Moses, Moses, make a bronze serpent, lift it up, let everybody see that so that they can be cured. And it happened. As Jesus facing and holding the conversation with a man named Nicodemus, who does not understand what he mean by being born again so that I can see and enter the kingdom of God. He's referring to this story because Nicodemus would know this story so well. He's a religious leader. He's a Pharisee. He knows all the laws of Moses, the stories that had happened before. And this time he's referring to, as Jesus is referring and reminding, retelling that story, which was so obvious to Nicodemus as a story of redeeming these people, saving these people, he says, I am here. Basically, Jesus Christ is dropping some hints about him. I'm here to be like that serpent. I'm here to be lifted, crucified, to be dead, instead of you, for you, to pay the penalty of your sin. But this time, that cure will stand once for all. It's not going to be temporal like it was before when the bronze serpent was lifted and people got cured. I mean, they got cured from the bite, but they couldn't get, be, couldn't get saved once for good. But this time, as I'm here to be lifted up like the serpent, your life will be renewed. So friends, as Jesus Christ is teaching us, we should be reborn again. And means we, our inner person has to be changed, our mind, our thought, and everything has to be changed. But there is also grace of God of reborn again. And that's not something that you can do. You cannot make this happen. It happens only because Christ, the Son of Man, Son of God, who lived perfect sinless life, who could offer Himself as the ultimate remedy of our sin and its problem, we could be regenerated. Our soul 
is regenerated. So regeneration, or born again, does not mean you literally physically have to be reborn. It talks about our inner person, our soul, to be regenerated by the Holy Spirit and by Christ Jesus, His crucifixion, His death, and His resurrection. And lastly for today, there is a reason we can be born again. We learned we shouldn't be just Christian by our name tag. Amen? We should be a Christian, a true Christ follower whose inner person is changed. Meaning it should bring some fruits. Uh, it should start producing some fruits. When we talk about the fruits, I can't think of any other passage than Galatians chapter 5, chap uh, verses uh, through, from 22 through 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And against such things there is no law. I mean, those fruits of Spirit could be produced in us, through us, by Christ in us, or by the Spirit of God in us, friends. Transformation is not about our external change. It's about external, uh, in, in, etern, internal changes, our in, changes in our inner people. And of course, as Christ was here on the earth to bring that ultimate remedy to our sinful dilemma, to pay for our sin, He was crucified. Regeneration means, or reborn again means, our spiritual status has been changed through His death. And as we place our life through our faith in Christ Jesus as our Savior, it's not we are literally being born again physically, but our spirit is renewed. It's transformed from the spirit and, and the soul of dead man to a soul of man who has a gift of eternal life in Christ Jesus. And when I'm saying the reason we can be born again, it all happens because God loved us so much. John chapter 3, verse 16, which is a very well-known passage to us. I don't know if some of you guys can recite this. I can recite this in Russian. Ибо так возлюбил Бог мир, что отдал Сына Своего из народного, дабы всякий верующий в Него не погиб, но имел жизнь вечную. Now, let me read it in English. Uh, for God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. A lot of people say, friends, we can be saved by our good deeds and works. But Christianity, our belief, and Jesus tells us that none of those good deeds and works and hard works will save you. I mean, those good works, hard works, for somebody, for others, is a result and a fruit of your regenerated, uh, transformed heart, mind, soul. Meaning you are reborn. You're born again. As you're born again, you want to produce some good fruits in Christ Jesus. But none of this work has to be done as a prior, prior action so that you can be reborn. Just like Nicodemus believed. Because they had been doing a lot of good works, following, studying, teaching, passing on those law, they thought it would make them be eligible to be saved. But God is saying, no! As your inner person is changed, as you are saved through Christ Jesus, and you are being transformed as you, and, and bearing more Christ's likeness and His character, His love, and His life being in your life with the power and the help of the Holy Spirit, you can carry the love of God that was shown to you and given to you. Why we could be eligible for that? No, we are not eligible, friend. We are, none of us are eligible to receive this gift of salvation. But because God loved us so much, God brought everybody. He activated this work of salvation. He sent His Son and He died for us. Now that He just, uh, you know, brought that ultimate solution to the problem of death and sin, or sin and death. 
And now he sends the Holy Spirit. He will guide us, instruct us, convict us, refresh us, encourage us, lead us, and remind us of Christ and his life so that we can be reborn, to be a different person, simply a better person than before. Today's passage is telling us, friends, we shouldn't be a just cry and Christians by name. We really have to be different. I'm not saying we have to be um, uh, condemning or accusing people around us who are not Christians. I'm not saying we have to be uh, uh, the supermans of this world. I'm not saying it. I mean, if anyone has to be called Superman, Jesus Christ is Superman, right? Because he's the one who conquered death. And we are his followers. We should be different friends. And the world challenges us. They want us to be a part of the world. But we shouldn't be a part of the world. It means in Christ, anyone can be saved. And as we are in Christ, any one of us can be regenerated, transformed, and be more like Christ. As he has grace towards us, he sent the Holy Spirit. As we receive the Holy Spirit, we live it with his power. Friends, let's not be just a Christian by name tag. Let's start becoming more like Christ. Let's be a being born again. Let's be a born again Christian whose heart and soul and mind is regenerated. In a way, it is more like Christ than how it was before or how it is without Christ, which is sinful, corrupt, and depraved. I really hope that you would become or you will maintain yourself as a reborn Christ so that you would live with the power of the Holy Spirit and carry the love of Christ and His sacrificial love even towards others and invite others to Christ as well. As always, much love. And let me pray. Dear Lord, Father God, we come before you, Lord. Uh, today, uh, based on John chapter 3, verses 3 through 18, we learned that we should be all born-again Christians. It's not about doing some good works, but efforts. Uh, just physically serve somebody around us. But it's about uh, having our inner person or people and be more like you and changed into more of your characters. And Father, let us have your life in us and let us always rejoice in this gift of salvation, Lord, that you allowed us to have. And Father, we love you, and we want to thank you for your love. Allow us to live with the love of Christ and God in us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, friends. Uh, this time we're going to go through uh, some announcements. Plugged into Jesus, as always, every Friday at 7 o'clock. And this time we're going to continue Lesson 5. Uh, lesson means topic, different topics, like subtopics of our teaching series. We are appreciated in Christ. We did part two last week, but we're going to do a part three. Uh, and Sunday service, uh, it's uh, 8 a.m., but it will be posted from 7 a.m. So anyone who wakes up earlier than usual, please join. And please make sure you attend the online service before you will join your Bible study or your fellowship with your uh, teachers. Uh, offering, as I always encourage you, it's important for us to train us to bring our offering because it isn't about giving a little portion of money that we have, but it's about uh, learning to give what we have. And we confess that everything that we have, uh, it came from God, so it belongs to Him, but we're just allowed to be blessed with it and enjoy it in our life. Uh, Gutri Youth uh, Announcement Room, Kakao uh, Tau. I know some of you guys are kind of slow to check those things, but I wish you guys could be more frequently checking uh, announcements and join all of our programs on online. And I do appreciate that you guys have followed all those instructions and be proud of it. Uh, Sunday Group Bible Study, it happens in different times, mostly afternoon and Sundays. Please join, follow your Sun Sanctum's instructions. Try to be more participative, uh, share your thoughts. Um, and what I know some things are not forcing you, but we are strongly encouraging you to be more participative, uh, even by opening your cameras 
and turn on your microphones as well. Uh, weekly devotion GPS, God's pointing and showing. Uh, it is uploaded on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays at 12, p, uh, 12 p.m. in our YouTube channel. So when it comes to us, because still it's kind of new, I will be posting the link uh, at 12 p.m. every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So whenever you see the link, please just click it and uh, enjoy the time with the Word of the God. Uh, that is given to you in every single day. Um, GTY, Good Tree Youth Servant Leaders. I know you guys used to call it student leaders, but I prefer to have them called as a servant leaders because they are students, and, and student starts with S, but as we all want to be a servant of God, and those are the people who or students, or our brothers and sisters who volunteer to be, volunteer to be uh, in a position to serve us more i want to call them as a servant leaders team and new servant leaders team called slt election uh, is going to happen on uh, sometime on june so either it's the third or fourth well, sunday of the month but we tentatively decided which day we should pick up but i just want to be more sure about it so probably next week I can tell you more details about the date and how it's going to happen. When it comes to um, the junior high group, uh, we need vice president and president uh, from 8th grade. And when it comes to senior high, uh, from 9th all the way to 12th, we are electing secretary, vice, and vice president and president. So we need five members of the student group. But it may not be coming out that way we may have a four three whoever wants to volunteer i want to encourage you guys to start praying about it and if god gives your heart to be a product student leader for next year i would love to have you guys as a candidate and we're going to vote for you so please stay connected now let's uh, complete our worship by reciting the lord's prayer our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, you are so much blessed. Hopefully, uh, you are fed through this worship. Uh, enjoy the rest of the Sunday, Sabbath. Uh, and have a wonderful week. I'll see you guys next time. Much love in Christ. Bye.